for a trip line. Mm -hmm. get into it. Um, so this is beta mining, hopefully you're all in the right room. Um, so, this, so hopefully this room is a bit better, it has more, about the same number of seats, but more have a desk in front of them, the, the, the desks are smaller. If, if everyone likes the other room better, you can switch back to it. And there's another room near that one, 3105, which is a bit longer and the angles are not, I think are not as good, but it has more room there. So, so we'll do this lecture today and then if, if you know, people like this one will stay here. If you like one we're in on Wednesday, then we can move back to that one. Um, so, you know, um, try and keep that in mind. Uh, so, um, today we'll be talking about um, the birthday um, paradox. Um, paradox and um, line collectors. So as I've read the board, if, if you can't read something or it's too small or the, the marker is fading out, please, um, please stop me. Um, so, so, so who's, who's heard of um, the birthday paradox before? Okay, about, about half of you. And who's heard of uh, um, coupon collectors? Maybe a quarter. Okay. Um, so did, is this something Tom covered last semester? In the, yeah. Yeah? He, he covered both of these? No. Or? Just the birthday paradox. Okay, so we'll start with the birthday paradox, and then kind of the next step is the coupon collectors, and then kind of kind of the third part we'll do on Wednesday, which is how to even these things out. Um, okay, so, so the 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 setting is that you've got some uh, um, some array of of um, Um, we've got some array of objects, and we'll say that the domain is on the right, like like this, where these brackets run on n. So this means it's a domain of size n. It's the set from one to three. It's, it's all the integers up to some integer n. Okay, and so we're going to have n of these of these buckets here. So you know, one, two, three. I see four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. So in this case, n equals fourteen. Okay. Um, and so we're going to study where we're going to do this process, where we're going to choose one of these elements at random, and then we're going to just repeat this and see what happens. Right. So. So we're going to choose some i in in n at random, and then we're going to repeat. Um, so, so this can model uh, on lots of different things. So we're going to think of this n as being something large, some, um, some large set of items. And so, so, so often, so in some cases, n will be so large we don't even want to have an array of size n. This is going to take too much space. Um, so, uh, but sometimes it'll be, it'll, it's not going to be too large and we'll, we, we can keep track of it. So for instance, this, um, this domain could be, um, let's, say, um, let's say, all IP addresses. Right, so, so there, there are lots of possible IP addresses, and, and if you're if you're a router, um, you don't want to kind of keep a kind of a counter for all the IP addresses you've seen. You want to just kind of process them as they come. So there's more than you want to actually have an array of all the possible IP addresses, right? Um, it, it could also be all the words in a dictionary. Um, so, and we'll see something starting, I guess, the week after next, or maybe the next week, where we'll, we'll uh, look at more than just words, but sets of words uh, uh, um, that, that, that occur, you know, consecutively in, in some block of text. And each of those is going to be some element from this set. 
Um, and so, like, I, I'm, it, it looks like we just have numbers here, but you can map each of these objects into one of these numbers. Right? So if you knew what the whole dictionary was, or if you knew all the possible words, say, up to size 10, then you could, you could map it in, into some number that it corresponds to. Right? You, can, you can have some list of all possible numbers. Or you can have um, something we'll talk about later is a it is um, some sort of um, some sort of hash function where it's going to be this is some function which goes from some set of um, um, some set of objects and it maps it into um, um, some number in this domain, right? So um, so I'm not going to say what these objects are, but there's some class of abstract objects, right? And so this can model all IP addresses, all words in the dictionary. Um, what else do I have? It could be if you're if you're dealing with some at a company and you have um, you have a bunch of different customers, you could have each of these could be one of your customers, and then you have a number associated with the customers, the customer ID, right? Um, or if, if you're Amazon, you have you know, a bunch of different products, each has a product ID, and you have up to n different product IDs, right? Um, and so, the, you know, this is a fairly abstract formulation, and, 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 uh, and today and Wednesday will be kind of the most abstract of the classes. I'll, I'll try and not talk about actual algorithms, but we'll talk about properties and, and kind of phenomena that occur within algorithms and, and happen within data as you're observing data. Um, so, so it's kind of a weird to start out in a, most of the class would be very different than the, these first two lectures. So, so hopefully it's not too, too scary, but I'll kind of go through some of the math and the intuition behind it today. So this is the setup, and this is going to be the process that we consider. So we're going to choose, say, one of, the, um, one of the IP addresses, of all IP addresses at random, and then we're going to repeat. We're going to choose choose another one at random, independent of the first one. Okay. So now the um, the birthday um, um, the birthday paradox is um, um, so let me write it this way. Um, so, uh, so how many trials, and I'm going to use K to represent this, how many trials K are needed um, before I, I see some object um, twice? Okay. So um, it doesn't matter which object I see twice, um, but I want to see I've, I've seen some object that, that I've already seen before. Okay. Um, so for someone who hasn't heard of the birthday paradox before, so I um, just pretend that I kept track of who raised their hand. Before. Um, so, so so how many trials do you think it's going to take before you see something twice? Um, so you think it might be about n, yeah. yeah. So roughly, so you think it'll be so. So after we've seen about n over two, it's about fifty percent probability we'll see something we've seen before, right? That's does this seem reasonable? Does someone think it's so? Anyone disagree with this? I disagree with that. Okay, because it's wrong. It's wrong. All right, <laughs> that's the paradox. That's right, yeah. So it's, well, it's a paradox, but as we'll show, it's not really a paradox. Yeah. Um, so um, so um, the way of going through the analysis is if you have two people, so, um, so the, the, the classic setting of this is that you think n is the number of days in a year. So 365 days or so, right? And, and everyone has 
everyone has a birthday, right? And so people's birthday distributions are fairly close to random, right? And so that's not entirely true, but it's close enough. So let's assume that no one was born on a leap year, right? And, and every day is an equal probability that uh, if I took a random person, then an equal probability that you were born on, on any given day of the year. So, you know, this is January 14th, so, you know, there's a 1 in 365 probability that you were born on January 14th. I think it's not correct that the birthday day is uniform. It's, that's true, but that's yeah. just yeah. what they yeah, say yeah, for yeah. that so problem. So it's not correct, but uh, just for now, let's, uh, let's assume it's correct. And if it's not correct, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit after I do the simple case first. Yeah, so what's the probability that after you've seen one, um, one person that you've seen a birthday twice? Zero. Good, right. So, so what's, now what's the probability after two people that you've seen a birthday twice? One, one, one three, six, five, right? So, oops, so if you, um, probability that A, you know, say Alice and Bob have the um, 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 have the same birthday. If you look at this probability, it's going to be about one over three sixty-five. And that's k equals two. Okay? This is k equals two, right? So k equals two one three sixty-five. Okay. So if you know if you keep adding these up, you're going to need about n before you get um, a good probability. But so. Um, so what's going to happen when you have have three people? So so I'll abbreviate probability with k equals three. You have a um, collision, right? You have, you have three people that that's one pair. At least one pair has the same birthday. So that's a three sixty five of <coughs> k minus one or something like that. Well, so it's so, it so times, that. Um, the right way to look at it is with three people, let's say you have Alice, um, Bob, and Chuck. And you have three pairs of, of people, right? So if any of these pairs have the same birthday, and each of them, in, if you just look at this pair, the probability is 1 over 365. So the probability that there's some collision is going to be um, 1 minus, um, let's see what I look at, 1 minus probably uh, um, that there's not a collision, right? And um, so the probably that there's not a collision is 1 minus 1 over 365. So this is for just one pair, and then you do to um, the power power 3 because there are three pairs. So if these are all independent, then it's the power 3. Um, so, so I don't have written down what this probability is, but it's not too far from you know, this times, times 2 yet. Um, but what's the pattern, though, if we have, have, uh, have, have k people instead of 3? So if you have, if you have k different people, how many, about how many pairs of people are there? Yeah, so there are, there are with, with K people, there are K choose two. Right, right so, so this is written, this is K choose two. This is how you, uh, um, if you see this written, this is how you pronounce it, k choose 2, and it's basically counting how many pairs are there. And that the 2 represents pairs. If you wrote a 3, you'd say how many triples are there. So it's not counting Bob and Chuck and Chuck and Bob separately. These, these are the same, the same pair. Right? So this is k choose 2, and, the kind of, uh, and this is equal to k times k minus 1 over 2. And let's just say this is roughly a squared over two. Okay, so there's roughly k squared over two pairs, and so that now to 
replace this, we can write that the probability that from k people you have a collision is going to be um, it's going to be roughly one minus one one over three sixty five to k squared over two. Yeah. So let's say. Um, so, um, so for about what value of k do you think this is going to be close to 50 percent? So if you're seeing with a laptop or an iPad, you can actually plug values in. So, so, so when you look at a formula, you're trying to understand what this formula is telling you. You know, a good thing is to plug in values and see what happens. Okay, so, so, so someone who saw the birthday paradox before, do you remember what the answer is? Right, it's right on order. Oh yeah, so it's, uh, so it's roughly 23. So, so at k equals 23, then this goes to about, um, 53.2% of the time. So, so when you have 23 people in a room, about 53.2% of the time you have um, a collision. You have two people with the same birthday, right? So, um, just in case you didn't believe me, let's um, let's go and do this in this room. Again. So, the, I, I have no guarantee that I'm gonna. This is gonna work. Um, so. I think I did it last year and it only took about 16 people. I mean, so so I'm, I'm probably, maybe I'm asking for trouble. But I think there are about 50, to me about a 95% chance, I think. So, um, so, so I'll go around the room, you can tell me your birthday. If you don't, if you don't uh, want to tell me your birthday, that's, 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 that's okay. fine. But, but then write down the number now and don't change it. Or, <laughs> right now, right? So you don't tell me the year. Just uh, just the day, so like January first or something. December eighteenth. December eighteenth. March fifth. March. September nineteenth. May twenty third. June twenty eighth. Yeah, May third. February 24th. November 15th. November 15th. March 20th. February 15th. August 7th. August 7th. October 31st. Holly. October 31st. Holly. December 9th. Oh, December? December 9th. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, let's see how many it takes. So, predefined orders. So. More than 16. Uh, November 21. April 16th. March 24th. June 30th. June 30th. So, so how many did it take? Uh, 23, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, um, 
Yeah, so it had, but so, so in reality, it was only a 53% chance that this would work, but um, yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Um, so, uh, so, uh, um, so it's usually, it's a pretty good estimator. I mean, it's, it's not perfect, so, so um, I, I worked out some, some other uh, kind of time points somewhere. What was it? So um, between, um, so the probability that um, the collision occurs between, you know, 18 and, and, uh, and 28 is only about, uh, uh, it's only about 30% of the time. So the fact that we hit it right on 23 is pretty crazy, right? What, what's the probability that we hit it right on the 23rd time? So that's probably a good homework question. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so I'm not going to work out the probability, but what is, if you just use this, this kind of formulation, what's the probability that you hit exactly on the 23rd time? Um, so how would we try and write this up? Isn't it 22 over 365? Isn't it just the number of people that we can match with for that exact prime? <coughs> yeah, yes. So, well, that's close. So, so, so let's say the probability that the first um, um, collision um, is at k equals Oh yeah, that was a weird talking about the first collision, not just eight. Right, so, it's the, so the first collision. So if, if the first thing that has to happen is that you have 365 minus 20, 22, so you have, um, it's a, you have, you have one minus, you know, uh, the probability of 22 people giving you a question, right? Yeah, 365 minus 22 over 365. So, so this is the probability that you have a collision on the 23rd time, and you haven't, if you haven't had any before. But you also need the first collision occurred then, so you couldn't have had one happen on the 17th time, right? So if you're going to work this out, it needs to have failed the first 22 times, and then Finally, hit on the twenty-third time. Yeah, let me let me reconcile this. Isn't that wrong? Because uh, isn't it uh, twenty-two choose two, or the the one minus that times the probability of getting someone the twenty-third time? Is that what that works out to be? Um. So this is. So it's messy to write out the whole thing, but this is. So if you assume that the first twenty-two had no collisions. Mm -hmm. Then, um, so, uh, so then you can actually just write this to 22 out of 365, right? So you have you have 22 possible birthdays that you could hit out of 365 possible birthdays. Yeah. So this is the probability on the 22nd, uh, on the 23rd draw. That you, but but you have to have had that you didn't that you didn't have any collisions before, mm -hmm. right? So, so so this would be times 1 minus 21 over 365 times 1 minus, you know, 20 over 365. So that no, means it didn't I, happen I, I on the 20, 22nd, it didn't happen on the, 20, on, the, on the 21st, and so on. And you have to go <coughs> all the way down to, you know, 1 minus 1 over 365. Oh, okay, so so I solved the, the homework problem for you. But, um, don't worry, the, the, this one is is not actually on the homework, but hopefully you're you know what's saying. So okay, um, so, um, so let's see. So, um, so now that we did this. Um, what were some problems with the, with the analysis I did? I didn't quite quite do it correctly. So, um, so Reza, you were complaining about something before. 
so, so what was the what was the problem with with this whole analysis? I think the distribution. You said that distribution of birthday birthday is uniform. This is not correct. For example, may, as I know, many people uh, birthday is around uh, winter because parents usually. Yeah, we don't explain. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so it's, the birthdays aren't 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 actually uniform, right? There could be there's, you know, a small chance of being on a, uh, on a leap year on February 29th. Is anyone here born February 29th? No. Okay. So, but there's a, you know, it's it's four times less likely than than any other day, right? And it's also maybe more in the winter. Or um, and maybe if you're in a room, there's a chance that there are twins in the room, right? So it's not a random collection of people. There's some correlation between the people. Um, so in in some cases, as with birthdays, it's it's pretty close to uniform, right? Maybe the probability on any one day is probably no more than twice that of any other day, right? So it's it's not too far, and this rough analysis will probably work work pretty well. Um, in, in other times, we'll be describing, describing algorithms, um, and the simplest version of this is if you're using um, if you're using a hash table. This is you're doing something very similar to this. You're trying to hash to a random spot in, in, in an array, and if you have a perfect hash function, which also is probably not quite true, but it's probably close enough, then you, you can you can assume that it's it's uniform in, inside this array. So if you have an algorithm, you can control it to be exactly uniform, right? But but in this case, it's it's pretty close. Um, so what's the what's the other what's the other problem with this analysis? I did? Uh, where did I make a mistake? You're assuming probabilities are independent each other. Yeah. So well, okay. Well, um, I'm going to group this with here. The, um, in the, I'm not a very good speller, so independence. So whether these are independent or not, this is possibly an issue. Um, but but it's so I'm talking about there's uh, there's another issue just maybe. Maybe worse. I've been a little sloppy in some of the calculations here, and and I gave a I gave a hint where I was sloppy because I wrote approximate. these approximate things. Yeah. So it's I I understand that Bob are not in the same. I, I does don't have the same birthday. It affect the chance of the uh, chunk chunk right? a chunk if they, yes, if yes. he has a, a, a same birthday with Bob or Alice. So the, the formula that that uh, one minus uh, 30, uh, 30, 365 oh, two to uh, k choice two assume it's independent, but it's not. Yeah, that's right. Which k is not independent. So 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 once you once you fix that the first two or that the first k minus one don't have the same birthday, it affects the the independence here, right? So. What I had written, let me rewrite this maybe just, just over here again. It was 1 minus 1 over 365, let's say k choose 2. Right? So the, the, this isn't really what's going on here. It's closer to what I wrote out when it was the probability that occurred exactly on the 23rd time. Right? So the, the probability should actually look something like. Um, it's going to be 1 minus n minus 1 over, over n. So this is the probability that it occurs hopefully I've got it in my notes right, but um, n minus 2 over n is k minus 2 and so I can write this out as was it one minus one minus the product um, I equals one, 
to k one of n minus i minus 1 over n minus n minus i to the k minus i. Um, probably, probably if something's it's like I have something slightly wrong. May have something slightly off here with the factor, but it's it's a bit more complicated to get all these probabilities correct. Um, uh, so so I, I'll make sure I get this right and put it in the notes online. But it's slightly more complicated. There's some problem with once you've once the first people you know have not had a birthday. Um, then, then the modeling assumption you made here is no longer correct. But this, this still works pretty well as a good approximation. So um, it's just, you know, yeah, so this is one of the times when, you know, like, it's not good to have your, be videotaped because you can see all the errors in there, but I'll correct it online. So is the, like, the original probability you gave or some other simpler one correct if instead of, like, uh, looking at a, and then the three and then the four, if you just have like a set of 23 people, is there a probability for you set, well, if you have a, a set of 23 people, so really what you want are 23 random edges in a graph, right? So, and, and what you want are, or you, you want 23 random, or 23 choose two random pairs of people and you ask if they have the same birthday. That's what this is, or that's what this is telling. 23 random, 23 choose two pairs of people, right? And each of them have this probability of, of not having the same birthday, right? But, but really once you, because they're, they're the pairs from the same set of 23 people, this, there's, there's some uh, independence around here, and it's much more complicated. But this turns out to be a pretty good estimate, especially as n gets larger, um, this gets more and more accurate because the, the uh, I, I think the dependence issues um, are going down as that happens. Um, yeah, so, so I don't want to dwell too much on the actual calculation because um, this one's a pretty good estimate. And so, so there's, there's kind of a cute, rule you can use to kind of, without working out, like I told you to afford it, to type it in your, in your, um, in your computer, right? And, uh, but you can actually solve for what this value of k um, should be. And so what happens is if you, we're going to set k equals to square root 2n, and we're going to see that it's going to come out to about 0.5. If you, if, you, if you plug it in here, All right? So if you plug it in, and what you're going to do is about 1 minus 1 over n to the, um, and we're going to, if this was k squared over 2, then this is going to turn into n. So, so this will be about 1 minus 1 over n to the n. Right? Does anyone recognize this expression? Yeah, so that's about, so, so there's this cool kind of inequality as n gets large. This is about 1, one minus 1 over e, where e is 2.73 something something, right? Um, and so then this number is about, was it about 0.63? Um, is about, you know, 0.63, right? So if you plug in about square root 2n, or about roughly, in a very rough sense, about square root n people in the room, then you have, have a good chance. Right? And so, um, so this is a good rule of thumb. Instead of, you know, having, you know, n people, as you might think, it's about square root n people. In the room, and so that comes from you have these these k choose two coming here choices instead of the, the 
hinge instead of the K choices that you're actually doing the probability. Okay. Uh, so, um, um, so this is the birthday paradox, and basically all I wanted to say. So, um, um, and, and the, 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 the kind of the, the important thing to realize about this is that when you're when you're looking at actual data, and you see some some data kind of coming in, and two and two kind of a uh, you know, two data points look very similar to each other. Um, and, you know, very similar may mean that there's only, you know, a, um, you know, a thousand different values they could have and they're the same, or, you know, they're close, and so you essentially, if you rounded them, they would round to the same thing in some way. Well, that's not that unlikely, right? That's what, that's what this is telling you. So if you're trying to detect some sort of anomaly in your data and you see something that's repeated, well, just repeating it once is, is not such a big deal, right? If it gets repeated a bunch of times, then it might be interesting. And later on in class, we'll see ways to quickly detect things that are repeated, you know, much more than you would expect, and how to do that. And you can use kind of properties of, of um, that, that just detecting something twice doesn't really mean anything, but if you if it happens a bunch of times, then you want to detect it, and those are actually easier things to detect. Um, so it's going to work to our advantage that we don't want to detect just if something occurred twice, but if it occurs more than say you know one percent of the time or one one percent of one percent of the time, it's one tenth of one percent. Um, yeah. So okay, so now I'm going to move on to the um, to the coupon collector's problem, and I'm going to erase what's on here, so no one's copying. 